Welcome to the Fine Lecture Series. On behalf of the Perinatology Research Branch of NICHD and the National Institutes of Health, my name is Lami Yo, and I am one of the developers of Fine. In prior lectures of this series, we have reviewed how to acquire stick volumes for the Fine method. Part one provided general recommendations. In part two, we reviewed how to enhance the overall sonographic image and discuss the region of interest, acquisition angle, and acquisition time. This lecture is now part three, and here we will discuss specific recommendations on stick volume acquisition for the fine method, such as fetal spine position, and how to obtain an appropriate four-chamber view of the fetal heart. All such information can be found in our published technical innovation article, part two, which is shown here. Stick technology allows acquisition of a fetal cardiac volume data set and visualization of cardiac structures as a cine loop of a complete single cardiac cycle in motion. Because this is a volume data set, this provides the examiner with an unlimited number of images for review. Moreover, stick volumes may be stored indefinitely and reviewed offline by the examiner or by experts remotely through telemedicine. With the four-chamber view as the acquisition plane and applying appropriate settings such as the acquisition angle, the volumetric ultrasound probe should automatically sweep from the fetal upper mediastinum down to the stomach. Here is an example of a stick volume being acquired. It sweeps from the upper mediastinum through the four chamber view and then down to the fetal stomach. When completed, the stick volume display comprises thousands of two dimensional images acquired through the area of interest during this single automated sweep. There are three main time points that deserve focus when acquiring stick volume data sets. Before the acquisition of stick volumes, during acquisition, and immediately after the acquisition of stick volumes, in which either the multiplanar display or stick loop is examined to determine if the volume is appropriate for analysis. Our technical innovation article provides a detailed and practical stepwise approach on how to perform 4D sonography with stick. We will now provide specific recommendations for the acquisition of stick volumes and obtaining an appropriate four chamber view for the fine method. As will be discussed later in this presentation, it is optimal to obtain stick volumes in a supine fetus that is also quiescent. But how feasible is this in real life clinical practice? Can this really be achieved? The answer is yes. Multiple investigators have shown how these conditions can easily be met during routine sonographic examinations. Now we will describe specific recommendations of stick volume acquisition when performing the fine method. First, the four chamber view should be the acquisition plane. We made this requirement on purpose because the plane most easily obtained in the fetal heart is the four chamber view. Please notice that this is not the five chamber view. On the other hand, this video clip does show the five chamber view. We do not recommend acquiring the five chamber view for the fine method in which the aortic root is visualized. We make this point because we frequently observe sonologists obtaining this view when obtaining stick volumes instead of the four chamber view. So it is important to keep in mind the difference between the four and five chamber views. Now it is also important to emphasize that simply acquiring a four chamber view is not enough. It should also be the appropriate or correct four chamber view. In general, this tends to be more difficult to achieve when the fetus is in a breech presentation versus vertex. So please keep this in mind. 
Obtaining an appropriate four-chamber view is a very important concept, and we will spend some time here discussing two subjects, how four-chamber views can appear completely different, and the concept of the staircase or caterpillar spine. Why should one obtain an appropriate four-chamber view in stick volume acquisitions? Failing to begin a stick acquisition from the correct transverse plane of the four-chamber view leads to not completely including fetal cardiac structures and or views towards the far ends of the automatic stick sweep. These next set of images illustrates this point. For a vertex fetus in a longitudinal lie, this is the fetal body axis. When the transducer is applied to the fetal chest, and the correct four-chamber view is obtained. Then for the stick volume acquisition, the sweep of the acquisition axis will coincide with the fetal body axis. Therefore, fetal cardiac structures and cardiac views will be included at the far ends of the automatic sweep. However, when the transducer is applied to the fetal chest, and an inappropriate four-chamber view is obtained. In this case, this is because the transducer has been rotated rightwards. Then the natural path of the stick acquisition axis will be the path shown here in red. So once the stick volume acquisition sweep occurs along the red path, you can see that this acquisition axis does not coincide with the fetal body axis shown in white. Therefore, fetal cardiac structures or cardiac views may not be completely included towards the far ends of the automatic sweep. Now we will introduce the concept that four chamber views can look very different from each other and may not be a true axial plane. This image shows four cardiac chambers and is a four chamber view. But notice that the other images also technically show four cardiac chambers and a four chamber view. However, one can see that in all the images, the appearance varies depending upon the orientation of the ultrasound beam to the fetal heart. For example, here, the left side of the heart has been foreshortened. The right side of the heart here has been foreshortened the atria have been foreshortened, and here there has been lengthening of the ventricles. To achieve an appropriate four-chamber view, one must obtain a true axial plane. After this is obtained, the stick volume can be acquired. A good analogy is this stock pot and its lid. If a true axial plane is obtained through the fetal chest, then the lid will be flush with the stock pot. This video clip shows the true axial plane of an apical four-chamber view. Notice that this is a four-chamber view, that there is symmetry of both the left and right sides of the heart, the size of the fetal lungs is symmetric on either side of the heart. The fetal liver or stomach is not visualized. And there is absence of a staircase spine, which will be discussed later in this presentation. However, quite frequently, it is very easy to obtain an improper plane of the four chamber view since the ultrasound beam may be tilted, resulting in asymmetry of both sides of the fetal heart. In other words, there is a four-chamber view, but there is improper alignment in the axial plane or tilting, similar to the lid, which is tilted instead of being flush with the stock pot. So here is a four-chamber view of the normal fetal heart but notice that the left side is foreshortened or appears cut off. In our experience, sonologists frequently tend to foreshorten the left versus the right side of the fetal heart when imaging the apical four-chamber view to acquire a stick volume. If this occurs, the transducer should be tilted and readjusted so that there is symmetry of both the left and right sides of the heart. In this example, again, the left side of the heart is foreshortened, 
and the stomach is also seen. Therefore, this cannot be a true axial plane of the four-chamber view, because the stomach can never be seen in the same plane as the fetal heart. For this four-chamber view, the transducer has been tilted so that there is foreshortening of the right side of the heart. If any portion of the fetal liver or stomach is seen in the four-chamber view plane, this means that the transverse plane of the fetal chest is actually oblique and should be corrected by tilting and readjusting the probe. The next concept to review in obtaining an appropriate four-chamber view is the staircase or caterpillar spine. When a fetal staircase or caterpillar spine is visualized on the ultrasound monitor screen, this indicates that a true transverse plane of the fetal chest has not been obtained, so it is important to avoid the staircase spine. A fetal staircase spine is when a transverse view shows spinal ossification centers stacked upon each other like a staircase or caterpillar. In addition, a coronal view of the curved ribs may also be seen. Here is an example of no staircase spine. The fetus is completely supine, is in vertex presentation, and a longitudinal lie in the uterus. As the transducer sweeps from cranial to the caudal ends, notice that the fetal spine is always located at the same area on the screen with its three ossification centers visualized in each serial transverse plane. In this example, notice that the spine is located always at 6 o'clock. On the other hand, here is an example of a staircase spine. Notice that the spinal ossification centers are stacked upon each other like a staircase or caterpillar. In addition, the curved ribs are also seen. This is all demonstrated on the video clip on the right-hand side. Here is another example. The spine looks like a staircase because the ossification centers are imaged obliquely. The red arrows show that the spine does not stay in this area, but appears to move vertically on the ultrasound monitor screen. So what does all of this mean? Visualizing a fetal staircase spine indicates that a true transverse plane of the fetal chest has not been obtained. Therefore, avoid stick volume acquisitions in this situation unless there is a mild degree of incline in the staircase spine. The next recommendation of stick volume acquisition when performing the fine method is a fetal spine located between 5 and 7 o'clock. This is recommended, but is not an absolute requirement. When the goal is to assess fetal cardiac views, the spine should ideally be located posteriorly between 5 and 7 o'clock to minimize acoustic shadowing from the ribs or spine. Here, the apical four-chamber view is shown with the fetal spine positioned at 5, 6, and 7 o'clock. If the fetal spine is located at other clock times, for example, 3 o'clock, as shown here, shadowing can obscure visualization of cardiac structures. Therefore, if a stick volume is obtained in this fetus for the goal of performing fine, the generated cardiac views and cardiac anatomy will also be affected by shadowing. This article reported that fetuses with the spine located in an anterior position were associated with a significantly lower probability by 72% that cardiac views would be regarded as satisfactory for screening. The cardiac views examined in this article were the four-chamber, right, and left ventricular outflow tracts. In other words, a fetus with a spine anterior resulted in a markedly degraded image for each cardiac view. So how can we deal with this issue? 
Is it possible to convert the fetal spine to a posterior position? The answer is yes. There are several ways to do this. First, ask the mother to roll laterally onto her side in the same direction that you desire the fetal cardiac apex to turn. So if you are scanning a patient and the patient is facing you and you want the fetal cardiac apex to turn leftwards, then ask the mother to roll laterally onto her right side. Another way is to gently move the fetus into the desired position by placing your hands on the maternal abdomen. Driving the transducer, which will be discussed shortly, have the patient sit up or ambulate or go to the bathroom, and finally allow extra scan time so that the fetus changes to a more optimal position. In the meantime, one can measure the fetal biometry, examine the other anatomy, and so forth. So what is driving the transducer? This is a sonographic technique to convert the fetal spine to a more posterior position on the ultrasound monitor screen. We first described this in the article of 2016 cited here. Here is a vertex fetus with the spine at 8 o'clock and the four-chamber view is obtained when placing the transducer on the maternal abdomen. This is the same image, but now as seen on the ultrasound monitor screen. The fetal spine is at 8 o'clock, and this is the fetal left and the fetal right. Next, the transducer is driven in a fixed arc across the maternal abdomen towards the fetal right side so that it comes to lie above the cardiac apex. It is important to always keep the four-chamber view on the screen while driving the transducer. Now, as a result, the spine is now more posteriorly located on the screen and has converted to a six o'clock position with the cardiac apex now up. Here is an actual example in a breech fetus. The fetal spine is originally located at eight o'clock and this is a subcostal four chamber view. The transducer is now driven on the maternal abdomen to the operator's right in a fixed arc until it lies above the cardiac apex. On the monitor screen, the fetal spine has now converted to a six o'clock position and notice that the apical four chamber view is now visible. Here is the same case, but demonstrated in a video clip. Notice that the fetal spine position is changing as well as the four chamber view. When acquiring stick volumes for the fine method, it is important that there is minimal or absent acoustic shadowing or dropout in the region of interest. In addition to clear visualization of the four chamber view within the region of interest, the same applies to the upper fetal mediastinum. Here, both the four chamber view and upper mediastinum are clearly visible. Why is this relevant? If acoustic shadowing or dropout is present, this may obscure visualization of the cardiac anatomy and structures in stick reconstruction. Here in this example, although the four chamber view is clearly seen, the upper fetal mediastinum is not visualized due to shadowing from a fetal extremity. Therefore, if a stick volume is obtained and then analyzed by fine, the cardiac anatomy and structures in this area will not be visualized. Please remember that if there is shadowing or dropout present during the two-dimensional live scanning and a stick volume is acquired in this area, one can never erase shadowing, dropout, or artifacts already contained within the stick volume dataset. It is not possible to do this after a stick volume has been acquired. Remember also that even when the fetal spine is positioned between the five and seven o'clock times, acoustic shadowing or dropout may still occur due to the fetal extremities as just shown, the fetal ribs, sternum, an anterior placenta, co-twin, the maternal umbilicus or abdominal scarring. 
therefore it may be necessary to move the transducer to different locations on the maternal abdomen, adjust the rotational position or tilt of the transducer, or wait for the field parts to move out of the field of view before acquiring stick volumes. Another recommendation of stick volume acquisition when performing the fine method is that one should visualize the transverse aortic arch or what we call the dolphin. After an appropriate apical four-chamber view has been obtained, the transducer should be tilted slightly to ensure that the transverse aortic arch or dolphin is clearly visible in the upper fetal mediastinum. Confirming visibility maximizes the chances that it will be discernible within the stick volume analyzed by fine. If the dolphin is not evident, the transducer should be repositioned or tilted on the maternal abdomen until the four-chamber view and dolphin are clearly visualized. Here is the transverse aortic arch, which looks like the back of a dolphin, along with the cross-section of the superior vena cava and trachea. In the video clip, the transducer is tilted slightly to ensure that the transverse aortic arch, or dolphin, is clearly visible in the upper fetal mediastinum. Minimal or absent fetal breathing and gross movements are also recommended when acquiring stick volumes for fine. This is because fetal breathing, hiccups, and gross movements during stick volume acquisition can lead to motion artifacts within the volume dataset. These artifacts lead to distortion of images and anatomical structures. This video clip shows the region of interest box around the fetal chest with breathing movements clearly visible. Here is a sagittal view of a different fetus in which the breathing movements are frequent and intense. Here, a stick volume was acquired in the presence of fetal breathing. During the acquisition, fetal breathing occurred at the beginning, leading to motion artifact in the upper mediastinum. The chest is also undulating. As a result, there is distortion of the three vessels and trachea view. Also note that in the ductal arch view derived from the same stick volume, the pulmonary artery and ductus arteriosus appear distorted, and therefore the anatomy cannot be assessed with confidence. So, this stick volume is unacceptable. Now, we have already stated that one should attempt to obtain stick volumes when fetal breathing and gross movements are absent or subsided. Occasionally, this will be impossible, so the following is noteworthy. When fetal breathing movements occur during the stick acquisition, their degree, mild or intense, frequency, regular or irregular, and location relative to fetal anatomy will cause cardiac views to range from being minimally altered to completely uninterpretable. So just because fetal breathing and gross movements occur during the stick acquisition, this does not necessarily mean that the stick volume is worthless and should be discarded. For example, if fetal breathing and movements occur in the area of the fetal abdomen, as shown here in the ductal arch view, cardiac planes can still be informative and the stick volume should therefore be analyzed using fine. Maternal breath hold and movement. Maternal breathing or movements during stick volume acquisition can also lead to motion artifacts within the volume. It is recommended that the patient take a deep breath hold and suspend all body movements during the 10 to 12 second acquisition time. We have found that it is very helpful to verbally support and encourage patients to keep holding their breath and also to inform the patient when the stick sweep is completed so that she can resume her breathing. All ultrasound monitor screens will show some type of icon, usually trapezoid shaped, that will fill in with color as the stick volume acquisition is occurring. This allows the sonologist to gauge when the acquisition will be finished 
so that the mother can stop the breath hold. If for some reason patients are unable to perform a breath hold, they should then minimize the intensity and frequency of abdominal movements during breathing. The last recommendation when acquiring stick volumes for the fine method pertains to the operator movement. Sonologists also should remain motionless with their hand on the transducer during stick volume acquisitions. We will now briefly review the nabology of stick volume acquisition on the ultrasound machine itself, which has the fine software, also known as 5D Heart. On the touch panel, there is a specific button for 5D Heart. In order to help the user, on the left side we have placed a diagram of the fetal heart and recommendations for stick volume acquisition so that 5D heart can be performed. The region of interest box can also be seen here in green. The recommendations are an apical four-chamber view, which is also shown in the diagram, fetal spine location between 5 and 7 o'clock, minimal or absent shadowing of the four-chamber view and upper fetal mediastinum, clearly visible transverse aortic arch, and chest circumference within the region of interest, or ROI, which is the green trapezoid-shaped box. Once an appropriate four-chamber view has been obtained, the stick volume acquisition is begun by pressing a button on the console. A key point is that the anatomic plane on the ultrasound screen will become the acquisition plane of the stick volume. Therefore, it is very crucial that the sonologist precisely coordinate pressing the button to start the stick volume acquisition with attaining the correct four chamber view on the monitor screen. Either of the buttons shown here can be the set button for stick volume acquisition or the exit button. A final comment on stick volume acquisition. One approach is to capture a stick volume, analyze this with 5D Heart, and then determine whether to capture more volumes. However, we recommend that when the environment is appropriate, for example, a quiescent fetus lying supine, one should capture and save as many stick volumes as possible in rapid succession, one after the other. In our practice, we do not generally analyze stick volumes with 5D Heart until after we are finished capturing all stick volumes. This is because sometimes an optimal fetal position can suddenly change during the sonographic examination. So it is better to capture as many stick volumes as possible while the opportunity exists. Putting everything together, here is an example of a captured stick volume. It is inappropriate because there is poor image quality, the fetal spine is at 4 o'clock, there is clearly motion artifact, and finally acoustic shadowing. So can a stick volume be acquired? Yes, but this doesn't mean that it will be informative and show cardiac structures and anatomy appropriately as seen in this example. Therefore, this would be an inappropriate stick volume for fine and even for analysis using manual navigation. In conclusion, we have reviewed specific recommendations on stick volume acquisition for the fine method. The following points were discussed. Obtaining the four chamber view as the acquisition plane. The importance of obtaining an appropriate four chamber view recommending the fetal spine location to be between 5 and 7 o'clock. We also reviewed the sonographic technique of driving the transducer and also reviewed minimal or absent shadowing of the four-chamber view including the upper mediastinum as being recommended. Visualization of the transverse aortic arch or the dolphin. 
minimal or absent fetal breathing and gross movements, maternal breath hold and movement, and last, operator movement. Thank you very much for your attention.